Can I sing to you? God is good, isn't he? You remember this song? It goes, No, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Amen. And what's the next one? I got a... The world behind me, right? The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, Still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Now, there's one more verse to that, but we're going to wait a little bit. I hope I remember to do this after a while, but God is good. You know, we need to learn how to get out of our comfort zone, and that, that for me, that's getting out of my comfort zone. That's getting to a place that I'm not comfortable with, the, a place that, you know, I want to, when I sing, you know, not the past few years, but before, I just wanted to whisper, you know. I didn't want anybody next to me to hear me. But now I don't care, you know, because of what he did for me. He paid it in full. It's paid in full. Amen. So I noticed tonight there's a few people that aren't sitting in their normal spots. <laughs> and that just it just blew my mind when Gina came up and sat down beside of me. I was just like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> she got out of her comfort zone and she came to the front. That was awesome. That was of the Lord right there. I, I, I couldn't have done that any better. I could, have, could not have planned that any better just because I called her a sinner. <laughs> and she says, you know, you without sin cast the first stone. <sighs> she took the rock out of my hand. <laughs> but I praise God that, you know, um, she came up. That, that, that was, <laughs> thank you, Lord. That was, that was awesome. So, Tonight, we're going to talk about getting out of our comfort zone, Get out, getting out of that place where we're in complacency and, and we're just doing the things that we normally do and, and all that. You know, it's just getting to a place where we can walk up to a stranger and just talk to them about Jesus, you know. It's hard to talk to family members. Matthew and I were talking the night, and he said, you know, it's a hard thing to talk to your, to your uh, relatives about Jesus and about the things of God because they basically close their ears, you know. And I've learned I've got to live it out in front of my family. Now, there'll be times when there's biblical discussion going on, and, of course, I chime in like I should, you know. A lot of questions are focused, you know, towards Patty and I and, you know, why is this and why is that and how can you, you know, those kind of questions. And, and uh, but, you know, with my brother, you know, I, I beat him in the head, beat him on the head every time I saw him, you need to be in church, you need to be in church, you need to be in church, you need to be in church. Finally, I said, Lord, he's yours. God took care of that problem. And, you know, with other people, too. I mean, I've, it's the same thing. You know, Lord, they're yours. You deal with them, because I can't. I can't change their mind. I can't change their heart. Only, Lord, only you can do that. Amen? And that's what we're called to do. So we're going to read in uh, Luke 9. If you all want to turn there, or you can watch, look it up here. But I, I like to hear those pages turn 
That's an awesome thing. Anyway, it's Luke 9, verses 18 through 26. It says, Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. And it happened as he was alone praying, this is Jesus, that his disciples joined him. And he asked them, saying, Who do the crowd say that I am? So they answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah. And others say that one of the old prophets has risen again. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily what's the cross a symbol of it's a symbol of death isn't it we are to take up that cross of death daily amen we're to die to ourselves we're die to die and you know lord i'm dying you come and live my life today live through me Help me to be that witness you've called me to be. Help me to love others like you love the others, you know. We have a hard time of doing that, of loving others. It's a hard thing to do sometimes, the way they treat us, right? Amen? we got to get out of our comfort zone and just love them anyway. Even though you're saying, rack them, frack them, rack them, rack them, frack them, you just love you. <laughs> In Jesus' name, I love you. Not real happy right now, but anyway. It says, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man, will be ashamed when he comes into his own glory and his fathers and of the holy angels. Amen. Man, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want Jesus to be ashamed of me. Do you? You don't want him to be ashamed of you? And then we're going on to 57. Uh, Luke 9, 57. It says, Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. That's a strong statement. Jesus said to him, foxes have holes. You know, and he's not, he's, oh, foxes have holes. He's not doing, he's not doing that. It says foxes have holes and birds have nests. Birds there have nests, amen. And then lost my place, but that's good, that's okay. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, talking about being out of your comfort zone. Not having any place to lay your head. And every day out teaching the people about how they're to live and how they're to act, how they're to love one another. But yet he has no place to lay his head. And then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, 57 and 58, you want to take it back to that for me, John? It says, Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Of course, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. My Bible says in, in the footnotes, it says, 
the three candidates for discipleship illustrate the demands involved in following Jesus. The first incident teaches that an emotional enthusiasm that has not considered the cost of abandoning, abandoning material security is insufficient. We have to count the cost, folks. Amen? In 59 and 60, it says, Then he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Loyalty to Christ takes precedence over all lesser loyalties. The man was offering the excuse that he must care for his father until he died. The spiritually dead are to bury, uh, hear this, the spiritually dead are to bury their own physically dead. But followers of Christ, and that's what he was talking about, let the spiritually dead, the ones that really don't care about me and about my father, let them bury their own dead. But you're my disciple. You are to follow me. You are to do the things of God. But the followers of Christ have an urgent task of proclaiming the good news of life in him. This does not ar uh, argue for insens insensitivity or disrespect with reference to the pr propriety of funeral funerals. Whew, can't even talk. It is a lesson against procrastination. And then 61 and 62, it says, Another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. This should not be construed as a teaching on backsliding or losing one's salvation. Jesus focuses on the truth that service for his enterprise demands undivided attention. It is not fit for the kingdom of God. Is not fit, fit for the kingdom of God means that half-hearted discipleship eliminates one from God's maximum use. This may be what Paul warns against in 1 Corinthians 3, 12. I'll read that later. But outward living. We, <laughs> we're a materialistic world, amen? Man, we love our TVs. You know, if we can, we afford, we love our homes. Amen. We love our cars, our trucks. I love my truck. It's a piece of junk, but I love it. You know. But I don't have the love that I have for God in that vehicle. I just, you know, I just like my vehicle a lot. But you know, some of us have boats, water skis, ATVs, all the good things, you know. Maybe maybe you've got a hundred acre spread. Maybe you got a few acres, you know, and you just love that property so much, you know, and you tend to it and you take care of it. And that's your priority. That's, that's what you do. You made it, you made it your God. That's, that's where you feel comfortable at, you know, in your seat here in the sanctuary, you know. Praise God that Gina got out of her comfort zone tonight. Amen. And, and Mary Ann, she got out of her comfort zone tonight. Praise God. And, uh, but, you know, we, we sort of pick our place, pick and choose our place in the sanctuary to sit. And we get comfortable there. And if somebody comes in and they take our seat, it's like, oh, I can't believe they're sitting in my seat. I can't believe it. Gina, I can't believe you're sitting in my seat. <laughs> but we get comfortable. We need to learn how to get out of that comfort zone. We need to learn how to, to love others enough to when you see a hurting person, whether you know that person or not, you could be in Target. God forbid you're in Target. I don't like Target. Anyway, a whole list of reasons there. But you can be anywhere, the gas station, wherever it is, you can, you can the, cash, the, the cashier, the person behind the cash register. 
and you can see that they're hurting. I've, I've seen it. I've experienced it before. You see that person hurting, you say, what's going on? Oh, nothing. I'm just, you know, having a bad day. Da, 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 da. No, I'm, you know, there's something going on. I can see it in your countenance. I can see it in your face. And if they have time, they'll just give you a little synopsis, I guess, of what's going on. You know, well, I've got an operation coming up. I'm really concerned about it. Or I have a, a child that's sick or whatever. Speaking of that, tonight, Patty got a phone call from, from my, uh, from our daughter-in-law, our oldest grandson, fell tonight, and I think it's his right hand. He fell on it, and his finger, I think it was his pinky finger, wasn't it, Gina? Looks like a pretzel. I mean, it, it threw it out of joint that bad. I mean, it's, it's bad. They've got it back in, uh, they think they got it back in place. They're going to do another x-ray to make sure, but... Uh, by the grace of God, he didn't break anything, but they said in, in, the, in the process of putting it back in place, they might have, you know, there might have been some damage done there. They might have broke it, but they weren't sure until they did another x-ray. But uh, so anyway, just pray for him, it's Seth. He's, he is, uh, he's going to be a comedian. He and I, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track, but he, he just loves to, when you're eating, he just loves to pick on you. He'll just get right in your face and just go, <laughs> you know, and you're going, what are you doing? He says, uh, he says, none. <laughs> he just gets this big little smile on his face. I love him. I love that boy. love all my grandkids. But, uh, so just pray for him, Seth. Uh, I just, uh, you know, it's hard, uh, for a kid to go through something like that. He wasn't really in a lot of pain, but Nana went and prayed for him, prayed with him. And, and uh, we always do that with the kids whenever they're going through something and, and they expect it, you know? And it's getting out of your comfort zone and just loving on the people that are around you and, and praying for them, praying with them. You know, you may not be doing anything other than just bringing comfort. Amen? Just peace, you know? But, but what they don't understand is that's peace of God resting on them. You know, we need to love on people like that. Went in to Walmart one time, got to pray with a lady. She was, I uh, can't remember what the situation was, but she was in tears. It's cash register, or cashier. And we just said, what's going on? And she told us. I mean, she just blurted it out. Of course, we weren't busy. So we said, well, can we pray with you? And the next thing we know, we got two or three cashiers standing around with us praying for this lady. And she's just in tears. You know, so every time we went back, we checked on her to see how she was doing. But she was getting better. Amen? But take the time. We just need to be Jesus. You know, we may be the only Bible that anybody ever opens or everybody, anybody ever looks at. We need to love people. Amen? The entertainment, you know, we have movies. And we go to the fairs this time of, this time of the year that for fairs. You know, we go and do that kind of thing. We go to uh, uh, car races, you know, the dirt tracks around here. We may travel a long distance to go see a NASCAR race or we might go to the NFL, NFL football game somewhere you know I've been to one Freddie and Diane took Patty and I been to one professional football game and you know what I did the whole time I was sitting there while I was watching no 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 I was watching this thing that, that the camera that is on the cables I was totally mesmerized by that thing you know, I could care less about what was going on in the football field because I'm not a football fan. But I watched that camera, and I was like, wow, look at that thing. How do they move that thing? Wow. You know, you'd think that I'd be back here around sound and stuff like that instead of doing this tonight, but I was just totally amazed by it, you know. Where was I going with that? I have no idea. But that's okay. <laughs> but entertainment, you know. Uh, going watching a show somewhere, you know, on Broadway or something like that. I've never been to 
Broadway. I've never been to New York City, thank God. But anyway, that's another story. Um, but, you know, just entertaining ourselves. You know, we get in that habit of doing those things. We go golfing, you know. Matthew said he still goes golfing. You know, I still haven't figured out what chasing a little white ball around has anything to do with anything, but that's me. <laughs> you know, so. But another thing is, uh, whenever we're not stepping out of our comfort zone, whenever we're staying in those places of comfort, we're avoiding persecution. Amen? We're trying to not rock the boat, not stir up the waters, if it were. You know, we're not, we don't want to, we, we want to stay in our safe zone. We, wanna, we don't want to make anybody mad at us. God forbid we make anybody mad at us. You know, Gina doesn't have a problem with that, but, you know. <laughs> but we don't want to, you know, we don't want to stir up trouble. But we need to. You know, we need to, we need to do that. There's, there's Christians in other countries. There's, there's Iraq and Iran and Pakistan and, and China and, and I, I don't know if Japan has that problem or not, but, you know, uh, I know the Philippines doesn't because there's churches everywhere there, but, you know, there's still churches that have to go underground, you know. Cuba's got to be careful about what they do. The Cubans do. Uh, I mean, they've got to stay in, they've got a certain denomination that they have to be in. The government says, this is your dom denomination no matter what. You can't switch denominations. Praise God that we have the ability to do that if we choose to do that in this country. Amen. But they're being persecuted on a daily basis. They're being killed on a daily basis because of what they believe. And here we are in a free country. In a free country. And, and they're telling other people about Jesus. And they have that, that possibility of dying tomorrow because of what they're doing. But yet in this country, we choose to keep our mouths shut, even though we have freedom of speech that they're trying to stop now. But we have freedom of speech in this country, and we can walk up to somebody, and we can say, hey, let me tell you about Jesus, because he loves me, and he changed my life. We need to do that. We have the freedom to do that. Why don't we do that? I'm guilty of it. We need to love people enough to tell them about who Jesus Christ is. Occasionally, I get the chance with some of my coworkers to sit down and talk to them about Jesus. And they ask questions. And I get to answer them. If I, if I, if I know that, but if I don't know it, I Google it. Or I'll talk to Pastor Bob about it. And then later on, I'll tell them when I get, get that information, if I don't know. We need to quit being afraid of telling people about Jesus. We need to step out, move out of that comfort area in our lives, and love people. That's all we got to do, just love them. Amen? Love them to Jesus. And worship. Worship styles. We're afraid to try something different. I sang, okay, so I'm not going to dance. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, I'm not dancing. <laughs> it would be exciting. I'd probably fall and hurt myself. But anyway, probably fall off the edge here. But worship styles. I mean, we just, you know, some people dance. You see it sometimes. Some people raise their hands. You know, whenever I was... Patty and I first started coming to this church back in 2002, and that's when it was down across from Dinosaur Land. You know, people were raising their hands here and there, a few people. And I was like, <clears throat> you know, I was trying to get, so I'd stand there like this. You know. And then maybe the next time we went in, I'd, I'd a little bit higher, you know. But finally, it became a flow. Because I wasn't worshiping for you. 
I wasn't worshiping for you. I wasn't trying to be all that for you or the people who were there at that time. I was worshiping the true and living God and loving him. We need to get out of our comfort zone of just being complacent about raising our hands. Or Man, if, if the Lord puts it on you to start running around the sanctuary, people may look like, at you like you're crazy, but you're not running around the sanctuary for them. You're son running around the sanctuary for him. Amen? I have been in Mitchell. We've been to the student conferences where people would, and, and th this would be adults, would take off just running around the sanctuary like, like a mad person, you know? But it's because they were so excited about who God is and what they were, what he was doing in their lives. You know, we need to get excited about Jesus, about who he is, about what he did for us. You know, he loved us so much that he took the shame of the cross. He not only carried that cross to his crucifixion, but whenever they laid him down, he was naked. So he had the shame and the embarrassment and all those things that we feel, he felt. And he felt the pain as they drove those nails into his wrists and into his feet. And he did that for us. How is it that we can't step out of that place of comfort that we're in, that we love to be, and just tell somebody about what he did for them? We need to love people enough to do that. Amen? It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. If they reject you, it's not that they're rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus. They're rejecting the creator of the world. Amen? We can't compare to the creator of the world. We're made in his image. Amen? We're his creation. But we're not God. We just represent him. We're allowed, we need to allow the spirit of God to take over in our worship. You know, if you need to sing out, If you need to sing out in your, your uh, prayer language, sing it. If you need to dance, dance. If you need to walk around, walk around. I do. If you need to come up here and pray, come up and pray. You know, allow the Spirit of God to move in your heart and your life in worship. Man, he just, he does so many things in worship. You know, he gives you clarity of thought and worship. He gives you, he heals you in your worship. He sets you free in your worship. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Man, he is so good to me. He just... <laughs> All the stuff that I mess up on a daily basis. Every time I do something against him on a daily basis, he still loves me. He hates the sin that I'm committing against him. He hates it. But he loves me. I need to, Lord, forgive me for what I just did. I need to do that. I need to ask for forgiveness. I need to... <laughs> and not in a haughty way, in a humble way. In our giving, we just had the opportunity to give a little bit ago. It's an act of worship. If we all gave like the Bible says for us to give, you know, we could take care of a lot of people. If we truly gave of ourselves and gave of our tithes truly and we were we were obedient in that area you know the church used to take care of the poor 
used to take care of the widows and the orphans. We used to do all those things. But now we've handed that over to the government and said, you know, you all take care of them. We, you know, we cherish our money too much. You know, it's all about me and what I want and what I think and what I feel. It's all about me. We're to, we should be the ones stepping up and feeding the ones that can't feed themselves, clothing the ones that can't clothe themselves, helping those that can't help themselves. We need to do that. We're the church. We're called to do that, not the government. Praise God for Social Security and all those things, but we should still be stepping up and helping out where the help is needed. Amen. And that's one thing I love about this church, church is that you are all are so willing to give. You give above and beyond. I've experienced it. And I praise God for each one of you that have done that for us. But we need to love also. We need to love those around us. Those ones that come through the doors that don't look like us, that may have a different smell, that may have a different look, that may have whatever it is going on in their life. We need to be willing, especially when they come down to this altar, to come up and pray with them and love on them. You know, there was, I read about a church a while back. They were waiting on a new pastor, and he was supposed to be here this certain Sunday, and, and the place was filling up because everybody, there was excitement, people coming in. Oh, who's the new pastor? You know, we want to meet the new pastor. Well, the new pastor, unbeknownst to them, dressed up like a homeless person. The dirty clothes and, and just, I don't know if he put a wig on, like a long matted wig or, or what he did exactly but he worked his way to the front nobody everybody just looked at him you know just like what are you doing here why what are you doing what are you doing he comes to the front and sits down well the next thing he knows the ones that didn't there was elders there that knew what was going on knew who he was so they were aware of it but the ushers came to the front or, or a deacon or somebody came to the front and said, Sir, I think you'd be more comfortable at the back. I think you'd be more comfortable at the back. And then they went through their normal routine. They did the announcements. They did all those things and the worship. And they said, and then as soon as all that was done, then, then the pastor, the uh, one of the elders gets up and says, Well, we, we're really pleased today that we have Pastor so-and-so with us. He's our new pastor in this church, and we just want to introduce you to him. And, of course, everybody's looking around going, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? He gets up from the back. They see this guy get up, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Really? Seriously? What's this guy? What is this guy coming to the front for? What is he doing and he comes up, and the, the, the elder who knows who he is hands him the mic, and he says, yeah. He said, uh, I'm your new pastor, da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. He said, I'm just amazed at how I was treated when I came into this building. I was figuring that I was going to be loved on, and people were going to be coming to me and saying, how are you, and just doing those things, but no, you all just gave me a, this, these haughty looks like, who are you and why are you here? You know, he said, we need, you all need to learn how to love no matter what they look like when they come through those doors. I don't care if they have earrings in their ears, men. I don't care if they have long hair. I don't care if they have tattoos all over their body. I don't care what they're wearing. They come through those doors. I expect them to be loved on. Move them to the front so they can get a little closer to what's going on. Show them some, some love. And, 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 you know, until you learn that, this isn't a church. You're just a gathering. You're just a gathering. So I'm, we're not doing any sermon today. This is the end of it. But next Sunday, I want to see you in these seats. 
And he said, I'm going to start teaching you all how to love. We need to do that. If there's somebody that walks through our doors that we don't know, that we don't recognize, that we think, oh my gosh, how could they be dressed like that? It doesn't matter because at least they're here. Amen? Show them love. That's what we're called to do. I don't care what they look like. If they look like me, love them anyway, okay? That's all I can say. <laughs> we are called to be lovers. We're not to be called, called to be judgmental or anything else. We're to be reaching the lost. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. I didn't, I didn't give you that, did I? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, I didn't mark it in my Bible. I wasn't a good marker. Ephesians 4.11 says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. It's our job, right? It's, it's my job and Danny's job and Gary's job. Who else is a, a leader in this house? Okay. What's your name? Oh, yeah, Jim. <laughs> I love you, Jim. I love Jim. I love picking on him. We are called, amen, We're, we've been set aside to teach and preach and do those things. But you know what? If it says in verse 12, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's the pastor's job to do that, you know, to go out and witness to people and you know, that should be the deacons, you know, they should be doing that kind of work. And, you know, we should be, you know, depending on them to take care of all this stuff. No, wrong. No. We're to teach you. It's for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. We're all called to ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. We are each called here. We are called to go out and witness and, and bring the good word, the good news of the gospel to the world. Amen? That's what we're called to do. Jesus sent out the 70, right? Two by two. What, 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 what was he trying to do? He was trying to get them out of their comfort zone so that they could go around and preach and teach the word of God and tell them about who God is. Amen? That's what he called them to do. We need to get out of our comfort zone and do that. Let's look again at uh, Luke 9, 26. One more time, John. It says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes into his, in his own glory. Are you ashamed of Jesus tonight? We shouldn't be ashamed of Jesus. Jesus saved you to the uttermost. He saved me to the uttermost. We're to love. <laughs> love people to Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to go back to, I think we're going to go to, did, you, did I give you 1 Corinthians? Did I give you that? Okay. Well, let's see. Let me go back to it real quick. If I can find it. I think it was... I know I had it here somewhere. Where did I put it? Huh? That's probably right. Let me, let me go there real quick. Yeah, that's it. It's 3, 12, and 13, wasn't it? Yeah. 
It says, now we have received this, not the spirit, uh, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These, is, am I right? No, I'm in two. Here we go. Here's three. <laughs> Next page over. Sorry. Jeez. Wow. Is that right? First Corinthians 3.12, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, something doesn't sound right. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it is... It will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Man, whenever, you know, and Pastor Bob spoke on this the other day, you know, I want, I want to be able to, I don't want to see a bunch of stuff burning up whenever, you know, ever all my stuff is thrown onto the altar. I don't want to see it all burn up. I want to see it come out tr tested, tried, and true. Amen. I want to. I want to have those crowns to throw at my Savior's feet. I want to be able to throw many crowns at His feet. You know, I want to do that. So let's step out of our comfort zone. I want like four people to come up here and start playing the instruments and do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell says, wait a minute, wait a minute, can't do that. Step out of your comfort zone. I did a little bit ago by singing to you, God, help me. Oh, in the last verse, the last verse, that's right. I forgot about that. See, I'm glad you all reminded me. I know you didn't. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So if there's anybody here tonight that doesn't know Christ as Lord and Savior, tonight's the night of salvation. Today's the day of salvation. And anyway, it says, will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will do you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning back. <laughs>